everyone, my name is Sophie. I'm a rising sophomore at Baylor University and today I will be giving you guys the definitive breakdown of every dorm for Baylor housing. I know housing season is coming up. It's going to be super confusing because Baylor has a lot of options, which is super awesome. So I wanted to explore all of them with you guys today. For reference, I live in Memorial in the Honors Residential College. So my experience is most suited towards the ACRC. However, I live in really close proximity to a lot of these dorms and LLCs and first year communities that we'll be talking about. And some of them kind of have reputations that precede them a bit. Hey guys, this is Editing Sophie. I just wanted to put out a quick disclaimer. I can really only speak best to my own living situation and what I know about where some of my friends were living. So I'd highly recommend before you take my word as like absolute gospel to kind of put some feelers out there and try to see what some other students who have lived in these different situations have said about their dorms and their student life and that sort of thing so that you can get a more nuanced perspective about this sort of thing. Also, I just want to let you guys know I will have timestamps both in the description of this video and in the pinned comments so you can skip to specific dorms, LLCs, that sort of thing for if you're looking for a specific place or my final comments. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get into it. So I will just be using the best of the experience I have and my friends have in these dorms to tell you guys what they're like and I can't wait to break this all down for you. So first of all, there are three different styles of living for first years at Baylor. There are living learning communities, living learning centers, they're called LLCs. There's residential colleges and then there's first year communities, something like that. So I live in a residential college, but I have friends who live both in first year communities and LLCs. They're all fantastic for different reasons. The biggest thing that differentiates these different communities is the commitment that you have for living there. If you live in a residential college, which is Brooks, Alexander Memorial, and Teal, I believe, then you have to make a two year on campus commitment. For all the rest of them, you just have to stay on campus one year. Let's just go ahead and get right into it. I'm going to start with residential colleges because that's more my area of expertise and I can tell you guys about everything. So let's do this. Next up is the Honors Residential College, which is actually two separate dorms. There's Alexander for boys and Memorial for girls. I can rave about the HRC for years and years and years. I absolutely love it here. I would highly, highly advise if you guys are academically serious or like come from a rigorous academic background and are here in college to really learn and make new friends who care about learning and studying and making friends and growing together just as much as you do. I think that this really is the dorm for you. It is fantastic. So let's start with Memorial, which is a girls dorm. It is has the absolute best community on campus. I 100% believe this. The girls there on the whole are super cool. Everyone has their own unique interests and things that they're studying and they're so cool and fun and smart. They're the coolest, best girls you will ever meet. It's by the best dining hall on campus immediately next door, also by the same name, Memorial. The only downside is, is that the dorm is kind of old, so the bathrooms aren't the nicest. The living situation isn't super nice. You also can't loft your beds as well, but it's not the biggest deal because the rooms aren't like cubby hole size. But I think that the community aspect far overshadows any of these negatives. I just love it so much. The brother dorm to Memorial is Alexander. This is just the boys' side of the Honors Residential College. The dorm is actually nicer than Memorial and they have a kitchen on every single floor and I'm really jealous. It's next to the best dining hall on campus as well because it goes Memorial, Mimo Dining, and then Alexander. I took a class in Alex and it's, it's fine. It's pretty nice. One of the maybe downsides is, is that I feel like Alex boys they're either like super cool and well-adjusted, like really nice, but there are definitely some like quirky characters as well, but I'm sure that you'll definitely find your niche no matter what. I feel like on the whole, the Mimo girls are a little less quirky than Alex boys, but you'll definitely find friends no matter what. And there are tons of people, all different types of people in every single dorm. Oh, just on the whole for the HRC, there are tons of traditions like toasties, which is when we have basically like, grilled cheese slash dessert sandwiches randomly right before exams every year. It's so much fun. I love volunteering at Toasties because it's a good time. There's all kinds of like honors events and programs and things like Ask Free Health, which is specifically geared for pre health students, like mentorship programs and that sort of thing, service opportunities. So within the HRC, there are a ton of extracurricular opportunities and some really awesome things to do. And it's just the best. I love it. We have Brooks College. Brooks is kind of on a little bit of its own corner of campus. It's almost like a college within a college. So Brooks is comprised of Brooks Flats as well, which are like super bougie, fancy, expensive apartments. It is by the second worst dining hall on campus, but it kind of has a Harry Potter vibe. So I don't really know if that's your thing. 
It has its own private chapel, so you can actually do alternate chapel there for a semester, which is pretty cool. Brooks is alright, I don't really know too much about it. Next up is Teal. I can't really speak too much to Teal because I don't have any friends that live there, I don't think. I know a little bit about it. It's more geared towards like science students and also nursing students. Um, and it's by East Village Dining Hall, which is probably the second best dining hall on campus, maybe the best, depending on your preferences. That's really all I can speak to Teal, so sorry. For the stuff that I really don't know about, I'm not gonna like speak on it too much because I don't want to pass out any misinformation. Next we're going to move on to first year communities. These all have one year commitments and some of these are, there's some tea. So first of all is Collins. It's also known as Krusty Collins sometimes because it can be a little ratchet. Its biggest reputation is that it has a lot of like sorority girls and like that type of girl. I feel really bad saying like trying to typecast girls but that's the reputation that it generally has like girls who are planning on brushing and that type of thing so read into that what you will but that's kind of the reputation that Collins has um, they're kind of the butt of some jokes sometime um, next up is Coconut. Uh, Coconut is the only dorm that I think might have kind of a negative reputation it's on the way far edge of campus past Brooks College and it's super isolated and one of the reasons that Coconut has one of the largest transfer rates like out of the university is because it's so like isolated and out of the way that a lot of students don't really feel connected as a community. I had a class there in Coconut and it definitely is kind of out of the way and not the nicest. So on the whole my impressions of Coconut have not been amazing. Next up is Martin. I really don't know that much about Martin. It's cool I guess. We'll talk about it more when we get into the LLCs. Next up is Penland. Penland is right in the middle of everything and it's also next to the worst dining hall on campus. If you go to our Baylor, 90% chance that you're probably gonna have your lunch in Penland. And don't touch the food for when you go on tours because they make it nicer for when the students are coming. So just like take it with a grain of salt, but they always have barbecues. Like, fantastic. So Penland, like I said, is right in the middle of everything. It's literally right off Fountain Mall and is super close in the middle of the action. I have a friend who lives there in Penland, really likes it. I think they have the Outdoor Adventure LLC is on the fourth floor. We'll talk about that later, but all the rest of the floors are just like regular freshman housing. It's not really suited towards a specific type of student. So if you're just more trying to meet people generally, not super suited to whatever your academic major is or your pursuits or interests are, then I think Penland's probably fine. One of the weird things is, is that if you live, um, a lot of people go like walk to Penland because it's the biggest dining hall to eat. And if you live on the floors and you leave your windows open, people can like definitely see you, but I don't know, whatever. Next up is Texana. It is in the kind of newer style of housing that's out by highway a little bit. And I really don't know that much about it, honestly. It's just a little out there. So sorry, can't really speak on Texana. There's also a place I looked on the website called University House. I've literally heard of it like once. I don't know a single person who lives there. So sorry, I can't talk about you house. Next up are LLCs, the Living Learning Centers, communities, something like that. These are all one year commitments. Um, first is Baylor and Beyond, which it's shtick is that they try to pair you up with international students or there's a lot of international students there. One of my really close friends lives in the Baylor and Beyond LLC and really likes it. I think it's a super fun community and a cool way to meet new people. Next up is, is business and innovation. I can, which one is this in? Oh, it's in Brooks Flats. So the only thing I really know about Brooks Flats is that it's bougie and super expensive because um, they are apartment style living, I believe. And business innovation, totally not my thing. So can't really speak on this one. Impact, I also found apparently, which is in Soro, South Russell. One of my friends lives in Soro. I think it's fine. I feel so bad that I'm like telling you guys all these things and I literally know nothing about them, but sorry, dudes. Next up is Fine Arts, which is in Heritage House. I have a friend there who loves it. He really likes getting to spend time with a lot of like fine arts oriented students. It's a really cool place. Heritage House is super nice. Um, so it's in the like Texana University House area and it's super sweet and nice and I he really enjoys it. So pretty good. Next up is the Leadership, which is in Allen and Dawson, which are pretty close to Memorial. And it has more of a business event, I believe. And I have some friends in there who like it. And it, I think it's also gender specific with boys and girls in Allen and Dawson, whichever one it is. Dawson is girls and Allen is boys, I believe. And I've heard really good things. I have a friend, a guy friend who lives there, and he says that the Allen boys are super, super cool. So yeah, if that's your thing, go for it. 
Outdoor Adventures is in the fourth floor of Penlands. I'm on the climbing team, so I know a lot of people in OA, and I have a friend who really likes it. They go on really cool trips together and do all kinds of like fun, outdoor seas types of things, like hiking and backpacking and that sort of thing. So if you're really outdoor adventure oriented and that's your thing, you will totally find your people there and they go on really cool trips and that's super fun. Next up is Science and Health, which is an Earl. I actually stayed in Earl during my time in Line Camp, and they're super new and the dorms are really big. They were really nice. But the thing is that they don't have closets, I don't think, at least the room that I and some of my friends were in. They had this like bar that would stick out from the wall that you could hang stuff on, but presumably to save space, they didn't have closets. So if someone correct me if I'm wrong, if you live in Earl and you actually have a closet, I don't really know what was going on with that. But anyways, that's just like a thing. The dorms are really new and they're nice and they're by East Village, which is really nice dining. I enjoy spillage a lot. They have a lot of variety. Their salad bar, incredible. But one of the things that I've heard more negative about Earl is that a lot of the students there really kind of keep themselves to themselves and like go about their doing their classes and their things and they're not super united as a community. So if you're looking for the like super close community aspect and hoping to make a bunch of friends right off the bat within your major or your dorm or that sort of thing, I would maybe just consider priorities wise with Earl because I've heard that they're not the closest community ever. Of course, I'm coming from Memorial, which is like the polar opposite of that. So I might be biased, but just something to keep in mind considering Earl. And another thing I wanted to address really quickly are the room types. So there's three different types of room on the whole, I believe. Yeah. First of all is communal style. So this is with a shared bathroom. You and I believe eight other students will generally share this style. So in Memorial, at least, there's mixed communal and um, suite style rooms, and the communals are in the coves, which are kind of like on the very ends of the hallways. I'm not sure exactly how it works for other places. When I was living in Earl, it's kind of like in the middle of the hallway. Anyways, it doesn't really matter. Shared bathroom, they're usually pretty nice depending on how new your dorm is. The one that I was in in Earl is super nice. The one in the Cove and Memorial, not so much. It really just depends on how new your dorm is. And I believe they're also clean for you as well. So you don't have to buy any supplies like toilet paper, cleaning, anything like that. Like that's all done for you. Suite style is the way that I spent my first year. I actually prefer suite style because I like the privacy of it and it was nice. And cleaning the bathroom is really not that bad. I actually don't mind it at all. Just put on some music and do it. Like you're an adult. You can do that. Totally. Mimo bathroom that I was living in was tiny but you can totally get used to it. The I guess one downside is I mean you do have to clean it on your own and you will have to buy your own supplies in order to clean that so just something to keep in mind. And the last way that I am familiar with at least is apartment style so you actually have like a common space and then the rooms for the four other students that you're living with four or so students that you're living with which is nice but it's really expensive. So apartment style in Brook Spots is typically the last one to go when it comes with housing because it is really expensive so if cost is something that that you are considering really need to keep in mind, I would definitely just consider apartment style judiciously when it comes to that. If I were to give you guys any final advice, I'd really say go with a community that you're interested in or that has a, something that's more tailored to you, unless you specifically just wanna seek out kind of like jack of all trades, like kind of potlucking it when it comes to the people that you'll meet. I know friends who lived in Penland, not Outdoor Adventures, just like general Penland, and they've made some really amazing friends and some awesome communities, even though it's not specifically geared to their interest. However, my experience in Memorial, which is much more geared to who I am as a student and a learner and a friend, has just been astronomically good. I can't speak highly enough of Memorial and I love it so much. So I think there's something to be said about finding a community that really fits with you and your interests and something that you are going to be able to share with other students and make friends with. But nevertheless, I think it's absolutely true that you really will find friends wherever you go, 100%. If you guys have any specific questions for me or any general questions, questions at all, please let me know in the comments and I'll really try to get back to you ASAP. I know that we're making some pretty serious choices at this time, so I really want to make myself available to you for any of the questions you might have. If you have any questions about student life, dining, housing, whatever, please let me know and I will be totally glad to answer all of your questions about Baylor University. Thanks and sick em, guys. I'll see you around.